So good afternoon, shalom likulam. Welcome also in the name of my colleagues, Ambassadors Lou and Walters, and thank you very much for your interest. First of all, I want to thank the Hostage and Missing Family Forum, not just for hosting us today, but for everything that you've been doing since October 7th. I came to you in the first week uh, when you were just setting up shop. There were volunteers swarming all over the place, um, planning campaigns, looking after the families, making sure that their names and their, their stories would be broadcast to the world in Israel and worldwide. And this volunteer spirit, this great, I would say, civic humanitarianism is still here 313 days later. And I want to say I admire you for it, and I think that everyone who contributes to this is uh, among the best in Israel. So with that said, why are we here? Speaking for myself as the German ambassador, I'm here out of hope and out of a very strong sense of extreme urgency. Um, this is a special and potentially decisive week. All eyes and the hopes of millions, millions in Israel and millions in Gaza, are pinned on this Thursday on the possible talks about a deal and we hope on steps towards the finalization of a deal that's been a long time coming. A deal to get the hostages out, to get a ceasefire in place, and to get the necessary aid in. A deal to start changing the reality of war in Gaza into a reality of peace, of new beginnings, of reconstruction, of security. And yes, a deal for Gaza will open up possibilities for also changing the reality of fighting and warfare up north. Um, it will help find a political diplomatic solution that, it, that would allow tens of thousands of Israelis to return to their homes from Rosh Hashanikra to Kiryat Shmona. None of this will be easy, none of this will be without setbacks, but it needs to start as soon as possible. Germany is very grateful to the negotiators from the US, from Egypt, from Qatar, who through many ups and downs have persevered. And Germany is grateful to the Israeli negotiating team, who I am convinced are also doing their very best. Now a word about the hostages, and if I may, I'd like to say this in Hebrew. אין כרגע חובה יותר תחופה מאשר להביא לשחרור כל החטופות והחטופים בהקדם האפשרי. הסבל שלהם הוא מעבר לכל דמיון. יש לנו עדויות איומות מאלה שחזרו. ואנחנו יודעים שאחדים מהם כבר לא יחזרו חיים. כל יום נוסף בשבי, במנהרות רמאס, עלול להיות יותר מדי לגוף ולנפש של עוד אחד מהם. אנחנו יודעים כי ליווינו את המשפחות שלהם בעשרת החודשים האחרונים. אנחנו יודעים שגם המשפחות האלה סובלות מעבר לכל דמיון. הייתי, ל... הייתי בלוויות ובשיבות, ראיתי קהילות שלמות כואבות ובוכות. ועם זאת, המשפחות האלה מפגינות כוח בלתי יאומן. לא מפסיקות אפילו יום אחד להילחם למען האהובים שלהם. והאחריות שלנו היא להילח... להילחם יחד איתם. מחבלי החמאס היו יכולים והיו צריכים לשחרר את החטופים מזמן. ובכך היו חוסכים מהאנשים בעזה את זוועות המלחמה. אבל הם לא עשו זאת. ביטחון האנשים שלהם לעולם לא היה חשוב להם. וכשאני אומר החטופים, אני כמובן מדבר עם חיבה מיוחדת על האזרחים הגרמנים ביניהם. פשוט כי אני מכיר את הסיפורים ואת האהובים שלהם מקרוב. אבל אני כמובן מדבר על כל החטופים, ישראלים ואזרחי מדינות אחרות, ארגנטינה, ברזיל, בולגריה, דנמרק, רומניה, פולין, סרביה, אוסטריה, פורטוגל, רוסיה, תאילנד, נפאל, טנזניה, הונגריה, ליטא, צרפת, בריטניה וארצות הברית. ואני כמובן מדבר על אלה שבחיים, אבל גם על הגופות של אלה שנרצחו. כי בלי החזרת הגופות, המשפחות לא יכולות לערוך לוויה, לא יכולות להמשיך בחייהם. One last remark. Um, Germany calls on everybody to refrain from actions that would jeopardize this perhaps decisive round of talks. This goes for any form of military escalation, and we have urged Tehran to keep this in mind. It goes for Hamas, who only yesterday proudly filmed themselves 
launching rockets against Tel Aviv from a humanitarian zone. And it is the responsibility of any politician in this country. What we saw on the Temple Mount, Haram al-Sharif, on Tisha B'Av, was a provocation. And in the opinion of my government, it was not only wrong because it was a breach of the status quo, but it was also irresponsible. So my colleagues will speak about what else we hope for from a deal, a ceasefire, the sufficient flow of aid into Gaza, and of course, the overall perspective of a new stability and security for the people of this region. We seem far from it now, but it can and it must start with the deal that will, we hope, be negotiated on Thursday. So I hand over to you, Ambassador Lu. Thank you very much, uh, Stefan, and thank you for bringing us together. Um, you know, we, uh, we come here, uh, Simon, Stefan, and I, uh, with common cause. Um, we come here, I come here, thinking first and foremost of the American citizens who are still in Gaza hostage, but thinking about all of the remaining hostages who for 313 days have been suffering, and for their families who some of whom are in this room, have become people we know very well. This is very close, it's very urgent, and my government, from the President through our entire national security team, has made clear that it is our highest priority to continue to work with the negotiators to find a solution, to release the hostages, to have a ceasefire, and to get that done now. The suffering of the hostages is enough of a reason for us to be here. The suffering of the families is enough of a reason for us to be here. Just in the name of humanity, it's time, long overdue time, for them to be home. But it's of enormous urgency because it's also part of the whole question of maintaining some stability in this region and not having violence escalate and opening a pathway for conversations to have a diplomatic solution in the North and other critical strategic objectives which would leave Israel, the region, and our countries safer. President Biden has spared no effort reaching out to world leaders to bring as much force behind this effort as possible. Our negotiators are traveling around the world and working day and night on the phone. The meeting tomorrow is very important. It's a meeting where everyone has to come looking for solutions. The time is always important, but time is particularly of the essence right now. We don't know how many more chances we have to bring this negotiation back together and to have a successful conclusion. And what does a conclusion mean? A conclusion means that hostages come home and their families get to be reunited with them. It means that for the people of Gaza, there's more humanitarian assistance that can flow in and the beginning of a process to think about building back a better future. And in the region, it's opening a doorway to find a path towards some stability from the situation that's causing so much concern and anxiety right now. The challenge we face on August 15th, which will be day 314 of captivity, is to, for parties to come together and to have a willingness and a readiness to move forward. The United States stands with Israel. We stand with the hostages and their families. And we call on all parties to reach an agreement for a deal now. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Stefan. Why don't we change these? We can move this one. The small one, too. How's that? Can you hear me now? Yes. Well, like um, Jack and Stefan, I come here with thoughts of the hostages and their families uppermost in my mind. Today marks 313 days since Hamas's brutal attack on the 7th of October. And I think even in our worst nightmares, we couldn't have imagined 
that we would still be here 10 months later. So I first of all want to pay tribute to them, to the families of all the hostages. I am in awe of their resilience and the face of really terrible pain. We have stood with the families throughout this ordeal and we will continue to do so until their loved ones are home. Their suffering has gone on for far too long. As Prime Minister Keir Starmer has said, the UK welcomes the efforts of our partners in Qatar, Egypt and the United States to secure an agreement on a ceasefire and the release of the hostages. There can be no further delay. Now is the time for a deal that sees the immediate return of the hostages and a ceasefire in Gaza. The hostages need to return home now and the people of Gaza need urgent and unfettered delivery and distribution of aid. 15th of August is the time for all parties to come together and agree a deal which achieves these objectives. But we are deeply concerned also by the heightened tensions in the region. Escalation is in no one's interest, and that is why we have urged Iran and its proxies to refrain from attacking Israel. If Iran chooses to jeopardize these negotiations, it will bear responsibility for those actions. We are at a critical juncture. For the sake of the hostages, for the sake of Israel and the Palestinians, and for the sake of the whole region, we need a deal which will create a positive dynamic and prevent the further deterioration of a situation which is already dire. By the Berkatzat Bevrit, a messer shell, Memshelat Britannia Baro, Chev Lehiot, Chidush Miadi shell, Hamasawatan, Hege Hazman, Lachzir at a Hatufim, but as I am at a Lachima Baza. Namshich, Lassot, Kol Masha Nachnu Yucholim, Kade Lachzir Otam. Thank you. I think we had agreed that uh, you, the American <laughs> colleague, would call. Uh, All right, we'll move to the moderated Q&A. Our first question will come from Khan Nufar Moshe. Go ahead. Yeah, this is uh, for the Ambassador uh, Jack Lowe. Did Netanyahu, to the best of your knowledge, added new terms to the agreement? Uh, and uh, what do you think about his position? about the Philadelphia Corridor. Without getting into the details of a negotiation that's best left for the privacy of the negotiating room, you know, we have all agreed to a framework. Now the question is moving from the framework to the specifics. Everyone knew that was going to be challenging because frameworks are general and specifics get down to the detail. Now is the time to come together, all of the remaining issues have solutions, and if the parties come to the table with a mind for finding solutions, we can get this done. It may not be done in one meeting, it, but it has to get done. It, we have to start closing down issues. I think all of these issues have solutions. All right, our next question will be with IDF Radio, Gal Jersey. Hello. Uh, President Biden said uh, yesterday that he hopes that a uh, deal will uh, prevent Iran from attacking uh, Israel. How connected uh, do you three think that the success, for the success of the uh, negotiations tomorrow will uh, uh, be linked to Iran uh, attack or will not attack? I, I, I will, will not pretend to speak for what Iran will or will not do. I think what President Biden expressed was his hope that that was going to be the case, that if there can be progress made, that we can turn the dial down on the escalation. That's why everyone has to come to the meeting tomorrow in a constructive way to find solutions. Um, uh, you'll have to ask uh, Iran what Iran plans to do. All right, and our final question, Times of Israel, Tal Schneider. Um, hi, uh, thank you for doing that. I uh, was wondering um, the reason for you to picking up this specific location. It's rare to see the three of you together in a statement like that. And also, um, don't see a political inclination on, I suppose, Israeli side, but also I don't see a political inclination on, on the terrorist side to do anything. It seems to me the world really wants to get ahead of that. But, you know, sides uh, themselves 
Uh, I mean, even if you look at public polling in Israel, the Israeli public is very supportive of an immediate war in the northern part, whereas many of the public, not all of them, still support a further fight in Gaza. So I mean, you don't see a political, and, and obviously on the Hamas, I mean, they keep on charging Israel with everything, and they keep on saying they would put Israel out of the map altogether, plus Iran. So there's no political want for that. I can speak to why we chose to come here. And I tried to say this um, at the outset. I think the Hostage and Missing Families Forum embodies this outpouring of solidarity that the hostage families have received from literally tens of thousands of Israelis. This is civic commitment and engagement uh, in the very best way. It touches me a lot to see all these volunteers who've contributed, who've given their efforts for 10 months now and, have, and, and are still doing it. I think without their work, um, it would have been much more difficult to make the whole world aware of, of this terrible crime that was committed on the 7th of October against uh, 250 Israeli citizens. To, 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 to bring these stories and these faces out into the world. I think this was incredibly important because the main enemy of the hostages, apart from Hamas, obviously, is oblivion and is people getting, you know, losing interest, becoming indifferent. And this place works against that in, in a magnificent way. You know? That's why there's no better place uh, to do this. I would add simply echoing Stefan's comments that we are here because we want to stand in solidarity with the hostages and their families. We want to remind everyone that the attention of the world is focused on what is happening here and what will happen in the negotiating room tomorrow and in the days after. And <clears throat> although quite obviously the hostages and their families are the people most directly affected, we all to some degree or another have a stake in this. Uh, nationals of all our three countries are, rep are being held in Hamas's dungeons and this conflict has many implications and effects well beyond the borders of Israel so we all care we're all involved to some degree and we all want to see a solution so you were left with a political question <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder why <laughs> do you want to restate the question well you don't see a political want or will on either side I mean, and you also, I mean, I'm not even talking about political consideration, but also if you do check the polling, the Israeli public supports an immediate war in Lebanon in order to deter. Plus, there is, you know, mass amount of people on the Israeli side that's still supporting the war. Not all of them, but still supporting the war in Gaza to what the prime minister projected as a final um, you know, achievement or total victory, whatever. So, um, First, on, on why here, I just want to echo what Stefan and Simon said. We're here because it's urgent that the hostage families and the hostages are reunited. It has to happen. So if that were the only reason for us to get together, it would be enough. I don't think that's a fair assessment of the political situation. That's not what I hear from many senior people in the government. It's not what I see when I move around this country. I think there is a desire on the part of everyone I meet in this country to bring the hostage crisis to an end. There's a lot of anxiety about the North, but I think if people think about the consequences of all-out war in the North, um, that's going to be very difficult for all sides. We've been working for a long time. The, today, Amos Hochstein was in Beirut we're working to try to find a diplomatic solution in the North. A hostage release ceasefire deal will make that m more achievable. We have to start tomorrow making progress on a hostage ceasefire deal. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.